welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Oh, what a terrific size audience out there. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for the invite here to Salt Lake City. Great place. What's up, my fellow Utahns? I am now a Utahn myself. So if you ever see this silver bullet just flying down the freeway with a California license plate, it's me. I'm sorry, guys. I was in a rush to get to Comic-Con this morning. What's a Utahn? When you become one, you'll know what it is. No, I didn't even know what it was at first. I tried to be cool, trying to call myself a Utahn. And then on ABC they said, well, Daniel, you don't realize it's not a Utahn, it's a Utahn. Isn't that a character, a creature in Star Wars, a Utahn? I was thinking more or less Avatar. Avatar? That's it's... another film. What are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Let's get back onto our panel. I'm sorry, this is the difference. Youth starts to try and win over, and he talks like rubbish most of the time. Isn't it? <laughs> Full of rubbish. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Welcome. So, uh, I think everybody here is interested in obviously talking about Boba Fett. And uh, you guys, you guys are Boba Fett. Um, so, I, I, the, first, the first thing I want to ask the both of you is, uh, what, what was it like that first time you were asked to come in and be the character? Now, now Daniel, it was probably a little bit different, but when you were asked to play Boba Fett, was it, what was that like? Well, it, I was asked to get in the costume. And the simple thing is, it's very quick. I fitted the outfit. It was extraordinary because it was never a big part, and I keep saying this, although you should say there's no such thing as a small part in a film. And this happened... Did, I ask, did you get any wine? Why you... <laughs> <laughs> no. But it is, it was I mean, pure luck that I did fit the suit, and there were, it was a two-day job. To <laughs> All right, can't cheers. Sorry, I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen. This year. <laughs> We drink lots of water. Lots of water. Yes, we drink more beer in, uh, in England, London beer. I know your sailors are already drinking at 18, you know, on the boat. I think Americans want to be on the English boats just for that fact. Like, what? wait, that boat's got music and beer? There goes the English sailboat right past the Mercury. Like, oh, Where did you get this information from? Because it's, it is... I, I was just it's guessing. nonsense, this. <laughs> It was a big guess, but I know it's true. Sorry, where were we? We were uh, the costume fit. The costume fits. And that's luck of uh, a lot of things. And I keep saying a lot of people could have got in the Boba Fett outfit and did what I did, but I was there, fitted the suit. I was doing a play in the evening, two jobs at once, which was pretty good. And you had more than one role on The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, I ended up with three, which was funny because Shekel was the lieutenant grabbing Carrie Fisher going into the elevator, and then Revenge of the Sith, I played Captain Colton, which was a very, again, very small part. So I consider myself very lucky. Who are you? I just bought a VIP pass to this thing and they sold me to sit next to you. I don't know who he is either. I don't know. Security is not doing its job. Really, is it? How did you get in here? Don't you paint windows or something? something? <laughs> well, I told them that I was related to Jeremy Bullock and that I had a VIP pass and they just sat me next to you. That probably worked at a convention, right? Oh, I'm related to Daniel Logan. Yeah, yeah, he's right over there. Daniel! You don't, told you we're related. You don't need a badge to get to the bar. Ah, uh, no. I'm holy. You'll find not my underpants. My lifestyle. No, yeah, you know what? I realized... <laughs> I realized that 3.5 isn't worth drinking, so I just gave it up. <laughs> okay. So what about when, when you came into the part? You hadn't even seen Star Wars. No. No, George Lucas hit me with his car, reversing out of his driveway when I was riding my bike in, the, in his neighborhood. So he's like, oh man, well, I need a kid to play in a movie. Do you want to be him? So, no. Um, <laughs> That's already hit the internet. <laughs> you right? All right, George Lucas is going to be calling me like, hey kid, what is this? <laughs> I did not hit you with my car, it was my truck. Um, 
No, um, I, I came into the universe very weird. If I could see, I'm blind as a bat right now. I mean, they got these interrogation lights on me. I can't barely see nothing. You guys are sh shining like the heavens, though. I tell you what, am I? Um, I came in the world very strangely, actually. Um, growing up in New Zealand, we have three channels. I try to explain, like, number one was me behind the TV with a coat hanger trying to say, Hey, you got it? You got it? Yep. You got it? Yep, yep. Stay there. Well, no, I can't see it. No, no, no. Don't move. So I don't know what one was. Two was my favorite. And then three was the news, which was my mom's favorite. So Star Wars wasn't on any of those TV channels. So I never heard of Star Wars. Being that they didn't do Star Wars for 16 years, episode six and one, I grew up in that time period with no Star Wars. So when they asked me to go and do the Star Wars audition, I'm like, oh yeah, give me the, give me the script, I'll go do this, and nothing. Then my auntie turned to me and was like, no, you don't understand, this will change your life forever. And I'm like, what? She's like, this is Star Wars, I love it, oh my God. We're gonna be able to tell people you auditioned for my favorite film. And then I got the part. So it was just really weird. I heard I auditioned out of 5,000 children worldwide. And uh, basically I was like the Star Wars kid on YouTube running around the audition room, you know, pretending like I knew how to use a lightsaber. Uh, and then I ended up being a bounty hunter. So just by coincidence, uh, I don't know how I got the role. No, do I. <laughs> so they said we'd look alike. With, uh, with, with Boba Fett, with your initial portrayal of him, uh, you, you drew inspiration for the, the physical uh, attributes of how you, you played him from uh, some westerns and things, I believe. And I'm, I'm wondering if you can talk about what it was that brought you to playing Boba Fett the way you did. Because even if it's a small part, even if you step in, it, I think there's a lot of people here who'd argue that it's a lot bigger than, than yeah, you make it out to. It, it may be a lot bigger. Um, but you sometimes underplay it. Although, when I started to say, oh, but anybody could, no, I must stop that. I was at an event, and there was an eight-year-old boy in the audience, and uh, I said, well, anybody could have played Boba Fett. I said it once again, and this boy said, no, only you can play Boba Fett, Boba Fett. And he's in, he was in tears. And I, I then learned not to, to do that, is to be, what do you feel about the part, what he does, moves, turns, that I would do it the best of all. It, it was a, a terrific, the costume helps, so that was, but at times it was lovely leaning back and just looking around. And Boba Fett is cool because he's moody. You know, he's, moody. Not his... he's just hungry. That's like a hungry face. Yeah, but you see, the young Boba Fett was disorientated, he was wobbling about all over the place. Go, going to English bars, drinking beer, doing all that. And as he grows up, something went ping, and then Boba Fett. <laughs> That's when I was confused on the dark side, and what's really side I wanted to be on. But now I know I want to be on the dark side, and all they serve on the dark side now is cookies and pizza, I heard. <laughs> double tree hotels you stay in, I think. <laughs> no, it's usually Motel 8s. But sometimes they come with a free convenient um, breakfast. Free convenient breakfast? Yeah. What's that? Well, usually I run down and I steal a little uh, uh, pastries they have. And I'm the guy who would take all five of them. You know, they put out five and I'll take five. Even though I only eat probably two of them. In a jetpack and just a mask. greedy like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> but hey, I love for free things. That's why I love being on Star Wars. I'm like, we'll give you lunch every day. For free? For free. <laughs> You got me. A couple months later, they're like, and you're getting paid. And I'm getting paid? <laughs> this is awesome. But it's, it's the funny thing with Boba Fett, as I say, he doesn't have all these lines, very few. But I remember the scene we were doing going up into, into Slave One, and I had to say, put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. Well, of course, he suddenly came back. On, on the tape they said, stand by, Jeremy, okay? I said, fine. So up at, I turned to the Imperial officer and say, put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. Well, actually, on the take, the actual take, I said, put Captain Cargo in the Solo. 
And how can you do that with a few lines and you completely muck one of them up? Well, you looked cool doing it. Yeah, I might have looked cool, but I sounded, when they said, okay, Jeremy, fine, I said, bum, 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 because you can't hear what I'm saying. But that was embarrassing. That really was. I love, Jeremy, you gotta, you know, I've been wanting to hear the story again. You know, it's like one of those little kid stories. You told me a story one time about when you had the little guy. There was like you, Darth Vader, and the little guys. With well, that was, yeah, that was, again, embarrassing, <laughs> embarrassing thing. But this is the moment that they don't the, get to see. The carbon freezer chamber, and we're going down with Han Solo, <clears throat> and I trod on Darth Vader's cloak. <laughs> he jerked back, which I went forward. <laughs> there was this huge heap of people and ugnaughts, and, all, and they were saying, shall we help you up, shall we help you up? No, go away, they'll think something's wrong, go away. <laughs> So that, that was fun, but that was embarrassing. <laughs> with, uh, with, with over the years of being involved in Star Wars, uh, how, how has it changed for you guys? So I know you, I mean, you're doing things like this now, both of you. Um, and, and Daniel, you got to come into the Clone Wars. Um, you know, what, has it been interesting? I mean, have you had any other job in your life that's stayed with you as long as Star Wars has? Um, well, for me, I did a lot of theater in London one after another, because they say, you're ideal, you're the right age. Then you do the play for six months, then you do it for a, a year. <clears throat> and after a year, six months, it's time to move on. But I had no other work. But like Daniel, as a builder, I was a decorator as well. I used to do people's houses up. But it is, it's a difficult profession. And you've got to go for it. And I, I would say to a lot of the young ones, if they really want to be an actor, then if you're confident, go for it. Don't just go, oh, I better not do it. You might have the wrath of your parents. They might go, you get involved with that dreadful career. I'm not coming to see you. So, all right, Mum. Well, my mother didn't want me to be in films or anything. But it's, um, it's fascinating. It's lovely to see people here now appreciating what you do, what the films they love, and, and it's great. It's only Thursday, isn't it? Indeed. I can't believe. I feel as though I've been here a month. It's a Thursday, too. I can't believe it, guys. You guys are here. It's Thursday. This is awesome. I mean, this is not even a Friday at regular conventions. <laughs> and this is a Thursday. Like, that's why I keep telling people, this is Thursday. This is Thursday, guys. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. This is what it's all about. It's coming out. Giving up your day job for a day. You know? Like, no, I need this day off. Like, everybody in Utah today, you know, this weekend, you know? But... Guys, I hope that you guys came here with big smiles, big expectations, and you walk out with those expectations filled and bigger smiles on your ears. One thing I want to tell you guys about Jeremy that no one really else knows is that his brother, Robert Watts, actually was a, a producer on Star Wars and Indiana Jones. So, I mean, I came from no one. People are like, oh, anyone else in your family? I'm like, that, that's me, just me. I'm like, wait, how'd you get so crazy enough for with just you? That's what happens when you have six in your family and you get sent to your room a lot. You know, it's like, hey, hey, Mr. Wall, how are you doing today? Who am I going to make up as an imaginary friend today? But no, yeah, and um, I got to meet him as well. So, I mean, just for the fact of that, I mean, I wish I had family that were in the same business. My grandmother was a musician. She sang, but it was just not the same. Um, and I feel like, as, as we do in this business, you kind of feel alone because you want to be able to relate with someone, especially in your family. Like, hey, what you work on? Hey, what you work on? I couldn't imagine having that rivalry. Like you see five brothers working on different films at all different times. You're like, man, you must be jealous of that brother today or that job. You know what I mean? Like I even get it with my friends. They're like, oh yeah, I'm working on GI Joe next week. I'm like, goddamn you, Ray Parker. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want to train? Yeah, okay. You want to spy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah let's put these clothes on. <laughs> you know, go hard call for him. But no, nah, you know, I. I I don't know where I was going with that, but you know, I, I think I just wanted you guys to know that uh, Jeremy also has Star Wars blood tie. Star Wars blood tie. I think that was a Boba Fett comic book too, wasn't it? It might have been. I am the man. I take my 10% for that, guys. All right, I'm working for it. So, um, uh, Daniel, the, the the one thing I wanted to ask though is hey, what so. The difference between playing Boba as a kid, which seemed like it would be sort of a whirlwind experience and, and maybe a blip on the radar, versus coming back and doing it for uh, the Clone Wars, which you did a fantastic job. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think one of the things about being in Star Wars is that you just bless for what you get given. Even if you, like I joke, a tree in the background, you know, swaying and then they special effects over me. You know, I could at least still be like, I was that tree. Trust me, the one in the middle of the other two big ones, I was the little ones, just starting to grow. Um, <laughs> but as an ambassador that I've learned to be, um, and I think I learned it from Jeremy the most, is that, you know, you just have to be yourself. Try and give as much as you can, but not too much, you know, so you're not going home at the end of the day dead, you know. Um, but I just really just stuck to just being me, you know? And I think if you come see me and Jeremy, we're just both the same. It's really weird, you know what I mean? Like, they pick perfect bobas for each other. Um, so you do this, coming out, you know, sharing my stories of Star Wars, signing autographs, taking pictures and stuff, and you don't really expect nothing else to come by through all that. And then eight years later, you're greasing up to the director of the new Clone Wars series because you're a big admiring Star Wars fan. And then you get a call to be on it, and then you realize that it wasn't him who asked for you, it was actually the director of the whole entire thing, George Lucas. And it's like eight years go by, and usually people get forgotten about it. And I think that's what's funny about what you say about our life and, and how it's impacted, you know, and what we can take away. It's like, you know, eight years of just doing me, you know, not, not even being Boba Fett in films. And George Lucas must have appreciated something and giving me another opportunity, um, which I was so just terrified of because I'm, I'm a character, you know, I, I'm, I'm good, I can flip, I can make people laugh just being a character by watching. Make people laugh? Yeah, I didn't bring my clown suit though today. Oh, I see you on that. That's my side job. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any kids play, yeah, kids parties? No, no, no. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, but um, taking all my physical body and everything I use to be able to express to people, I had to hone into a voice. And I mean, I'm very, I got ADHD, I don't stop moving. So to be able to stop that movement and put it into a voice, which you realize the fan base behind it. So I had to have the same passion that I'd had for Star Wars the movie as I did more for this cartoon. So it's like, as I'm trying to move in the studio, it's taken away from the character's voice and the strength. So I'm literally tying myself in a straight jacket, you know, to try and get those words to come across powerful and strong, um, as if I was moving or acting in actually a, um, at the movie or, you know, live action. So I found it very difficult, but um, the cool thing about the cartoon, also like the movie, is that the cast members were all so cool. Um, uh, D. Bradley Baker, he was awesome. Um, all these amazing uh, voice actors were, were amazing, but. Um, Oh, I just had a brain. I could list them for you. Uh, do you. Do you need help? I, this is going to be terrible. He helped me for three hours and I just forgot his name. He was a crazy one too. I loved him. Sorry, we got plenty of time. So just... Yeah. Uh, oh, well, well, one of the actors on the, on the Clone Wars, I had these new these episodes that came up that didn't come and get released. Yeah, I can't say that. But I don't know. But yeah, Corey. Thank you, man. My buddy Corey, he played Cad Bane. Um, he took three hours of his day and FaceTimed me and went over the lines word by word by word with me just so that I had those scripts down to a T. And I mean, this guy's got millions of things out on right now on TV and for him to take his time out of his day without trying to rush me along, three hours, we sat there and read over the scripts of the Star Wars that they had given and he did it openly and happily. So, I mean, that's cool, you know, like, that's a cool thing about acting, is you get such cool people to work with. It'd be great if we could see Boba go, go against Cad Bane. It would be, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, with, with your portrayal of Boba Fett, what did you take from the theater, and how does, how does being in a film like that dif differ from your experience in the theater? Um, the only difference, with, I mean, with theater, your body movements are important but with the with the Boba Fett they're important when you're just moving and you know that the costume is going to make him look much better than the character is and I remember just walking and every morning I'd go into the studio and walk past Jabba the Hutt who was like this ready to be operated but you would work on it and everything was just movement and looks nothing not nothing too much because that camera lens will make it even better 
with um, Irvin Kirshner and Richard Marquand, who directed those those two films that, that you were in, uh, is there anything that they, they sort of imparted or told you about the character that kind of helped click any insight for you? Yeah, I think with Irvin Kirshner, it was great fun. He, he likes, he's one of those people who say, right, walk with me. One, two, three, four. Now, how's that? What, what, do you th what do you think? I said, that's fantastic. I'll, I'll, can I try it? He said, yes. And I did it completely differently. And he said, wonderful. Thank you, wonderful. <laughs> and he'd been like this because he liked to act out the scene you're going to play. And I mean, I had, we, we talked earlier on, it was a terrific series of films to be involved with because everybody worked very hard for the whole day, but also had a giggle now and then because you have to, because it'd drive you mad. But what a fabulous time we had. Uh, with with the the casts that you guys worked with, um, you know, was there was there anything surprising about any of the people you were working with, especially the uh, you know the the leads, the people who who people, uh, the main cast who people might find uh, unapproachable, maybe or not, you know, what what was it like working with these people who were, you know, on top of the world uh, in stardom at that point? You know, were they down to earth? What was it like working with these guys? Lots. I mean, you see, Carrie Fisher was great fun, very giggly and naughty, always joking. And Mark was great fun. Uh, Harrison Ford I only met once when the carbon freezing chamber was about to go in. And I remember him saying when they were rehearsing, he said, hey, that's quite a good suit you got. And I said, yeah, it's pretty good, but it's hot. He said, well, be the hero, open neck shirt, breathe in and out. That's cool. He was great. He was good fun. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it was awesome being 13 on the set, you know, everyone had to embrace me, take me in, you know, it was not like, get out of here, kid. It was like, hey, kid, how you, come on in. So I got to go everywhere. I actually had this book from episode one that my sister just found, and it's of all, the, every single person on the set, I got them to sign my book, from the person who drove me, to the person who was catering, to like, the guy who was holding the boom, hey, can you put that boom down for to sign my book? Um, but Natalie Portman doesn't sign her autograph, um, unless for charity, and uh, uh, I had asked some of the guys, like, hey, do you think I should go ask Natalie for her autograph, and they're like, Ah, you should not. Good luck, kid. She doesn't sign an autograph for nobody, you know what I mean? I, I can get an autograph, just watch this. So she was in that white Padme outfit with the big claw on the back of her. So I was like, sorry, sweetheart. Uh, 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 Mrs. Uh, Portman, can, can you sign my book, please? Oh, you're a cute little boy. Of course, you know, you know. <laughs> Then I went around like, she signed it, she signed it. Everybody else who had asked for an autograph got, probably got a no, so they're like, I hate that kid even more now. But yeah, that was one of the cool things I remember about Natalie. Then I met her in San Diego Comic Con uh, quite a few years later, and I had been training with Ray Park for a few years, so I buffened up. And uh, I remember I saw her, she had uh, just shaved her hair off for... Uh, Be for Vendetta. Exactly. And she saw me and Ray. And then just like started crying in, at, at San Diego Comic Con. I remember it just broke my heart. And all I could tell her was, You're the most beautiful bald head woman there could ever be. <laughs> That's like an Anakin level smooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you gotta stop crying for about a second. <laughs> Um, we want to take some questions from the audience too. We've got the microphones. The line is back. <laughs> so, is there one over here? Is there anyone here who had a question? Yeah, there's someone there. I think. Daniel. Yes. I was. God. <laughs> He's over here. Oh. I was Hello, Jesus. <laughs> I was wondering what it was like being on Star Wars The Clone Wars. The Clone Wars... You know what? There's families in the Star Wars world. There was first the first family that was the original cast. Then they all brought us in with the new movies and we all embraced each other. Well now this is another side of a family that's kind of like your step-siblings, you know what I mean? <laughs> they are related but they're kind of not, but they're kind of... but. They embraced me just as well, and I mean, I remember turning to some of the guys and being like, 
did you hear that cricket? They're like, brr, brr. Dean Bradley Baker can do a cricket sound, and he's over there in the corner, like, <laughs> wait, hang on, I think there's a, where is that insect? You know, and then he's doing a bird sound, like, brr, brr. I'm like, how'd that get in here? <laughs> like, it was so cool to see the talents of these actors, you know, just by using their voices. And I mean, I still try to do the cricket voice to today, and it sounds even terrible than it did when I first started, but I mean, it literally sounded like a cricket. Um, but my experience was awesome. I was very nervous at first. And I used to buy Dave Filoni breakfast, lunch, and dinner whenever I saw him. He usually declined because he knew I was trying to bribe him. But uh, I figured that that was my way I got into the Clone Wars until I found out about George. Um, but I loved it. I mean, eight years of really doing nothing. I've been doing acting classes for the last eight years, trying to learn more about different acting uh, uh, coaches and stuff like that. Um, especially a lot of... Um, theater uh, past teachers, um, but uh, it was Star Wars. <laughs> I think that's the only thing you could say, you know. I, Star Wars is awesome. When you get a script with Star Wars on it, oh man, you run around your house like, yes, I got another one. Like, <laughs> it was so cool. And we had so many more episodes that we shot, but um, they were a little too violent, I think. Um, Boba Fett was growing up. <laughs> and his bounties were far from over. So there's work we've, we've, you've done on Clone Wars we haven't seen? ton, yeah. We did a lot. Kind of broke my heart, but yeah. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of good Boba stuff that we did. We recorded, they actually had sh short roughs too. They needed a couple million to uh, finish them up. I don't know if they're going to be released because they've been releasing some of the episodes that they hadn't done. But I pray that they, they come out because, I mean, as a fan of Boba Fett and Star Wars, oh man. I'm getting nervous just thinking about him again. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Boba Fett looks like he needs to go to the toilet. <laughs> no, that's my excited move. So why don't we go over to this side? Um, um, did you ever regret um, becoming an actor? <laughs> Do we ever regret becoming actors? Yeah. I don't think you can regret anything at all, now you've done it. There are a lot of people who have got to a certain, done, done some wonderful work and said, this is not me, I've got to get out now, early. But I would never, ever regret, because every job, bar, bar one, every job I've done over 30 years, I've enjoyed every single one. Were you the one who said to me that um, you don't choose acting, acting chooses you? You were the one? And I think that, that was, I, 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 it took me a second for it to sink. But you're right, like, we are actors. We didn't choose to be, we just are. We love it, this is what we were born to do. Um, and it's like anybody who does anything and has passion for it, it's weird, you know? It's like, it's like we were born to do this. We were chosen to be actors, you know? We well, didn't I, choose this world. I really. waited tables for four years, off and on. But at, I, at my restaurant. And I enjoyed it because <laughs> you, you perform. You're actually performing, someone comes in, ah, the table, would you like a glass of wine, sir? This is a 58 Alain Sanchal from France. And you completely go over the top, but it sort of helps your confidence. I think that, that was fun, doing tables. It also helps when our, when our restaurant's called Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we'll move over here. Questions that are semi related. Have either of you two read up on the expanded universe of Boba Fett? Oh, I created the expanded universe. <laughs> I am the expanded universe. <laughs> no, dude. We're just talking about the blood ties? Dude, that was an awesome comic. I love it because they cartooned me into it. Like, dude, I look so real. I look like a domestic animal. What am I? Ape? Monkey? Man. Just like the Unleashed figure, people are like, you got your own toy now. I'm like, yeah, but what am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. What'd they do? Scan them some kind of ape or something, you know? I was going crazy in their junk, like, ah! That's perfect Boba Fett, look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember doing that. All right, and uh, the second question is, after episode six... Uh, Where's it coming from? Boba oh, he's over here. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. After episode six, Boba Fett survives the Scarlet Pit because of his armor, and it helps uh, Han and Han's daughter uh, defeat uh, 
hit her twin, Jason, Diana defeat Jason. What do you think of that? Do you think like the portrayal of Boba Fett after episode six represents the character or? Dun, dun, dun. So how, uh, with, with you guys, with um, the stories of Boba Fett after that, like him escaping the Sarlacc, I mean, how exposed to that were you guys? Well, he certainly escapes the Sarlacc. Okay. He, he has to. You, at the end of a piece, you see this hand crawling up, and then someone else helps him out. He, he's a good mechanic. Uh, he's opened up a couple of restaurants down in the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> uh, one was called Hooters, but I don't know what they were. The Shooters! Shooters, Jeremy! Shooters, sorry. But no, he, he does get out. He's too clever. He gets out. So neither of you have got a call for episode seven, then? Not yet, but I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. He's like, I only got a fax. <laughs> no, I'm not allowed to say I'm sorry. Oh. My question's for Jeremy. Oh. Hey, you know, I gotta have all these people in your line like, so Mr. Bullock, um, have you been asked to, so you've been asked to come back? <laughs> You're gonna have the whole, everybody in our line today. Now tell me, what are you gonna do in episode seven? We're gonna make up stories. I'll be like, I'm gonna play baby fat. Actually, I'm actually a girl of my That's twin Barbara Boba Fett. Fett. <laughs> Barbara. Barbara Fett. Well, you know, if I was in an English pub, I definitely wouldn't be sober fat. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, why don't we go over here? Alright, so my question's for Jeremy. When did you realized that Boba Fett was such a fan favorite? Like, when did it hit you? When he created him, duh! <laughs> no, I think that when they re-released the films back in 1996, it was then that there seemed to be more interest. Maybe they're seeing it again and, and the character looks good, so that's why I think he became popular. Guys, this is Jeremy Bullock, the original Boba Fett. Thank you. You guys know you guys wanted him here. Here he is. I'm telling you, that's all I got told before I was doing interviews for about a week. I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to meet the original Boba Fett. I'm like, dude, this Boba Fett's here for now. <laughs> like, you know, hello. Like, no, the original, I can't wait for him to come out. He never comes out. I'm like, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Bullock. Oh my god, I forgot you. Who? <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> I told you, I told them I'm a, I'm a relative of yours, okay? And I'm enjoying my time with you right now. What's a relative? Well, relatively speaking. <laughs> what was it like for you guys the first time they handed you or you saw an action figure of yourself? I think that is too much. I remember my mother saying, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Could you implant? We can't see your face, dear. <laughs> there was this plastic thing, but that was remarkable. I showed all my friends. I said, look, in there, look, look. <laughs> me, I got a whole bunch of Star Wars toys sent to my house. They were sending me like boxes on boxes. These boxes were bigger than me. And one of the sets, they sent me the blue little, uh, that blue little toy. Well, I had all my friends from school come over. This is before I even knew what a convention was and how precious these toys could have been if I kept them. <laughs> I had all the kids come over like, hey, you want one? What's your name? Yep. Reese, okay, R-Y, okay, and I had like this terrible autograph, I mean it was terrible, it was like me and five-year-old writing, but my friends still have the toy, I go back to New Zealand, they got it in their houses now, you know, they all buy the houses, and they've got my toy still there, I'm like, dude, that is so weird, I, <laughs> I just gave away, not expecting nothing out of it, now I go to conventions where they come up to me all the time, like, Mr. That's weird. Every time it's weird. It's weird. It really, it's cool though, but it's weird. By the way, it's not expecting anything, not nothing. Oh. <laughs> try, try it once that's again. That's my, my, see, that's my New Zealand side coming out. I was like, oh man, that looks like the funnest. No, Daniel, it's more fun. You enjoy it more. I'm like, what the? Funnest is still my word. The worst is when I hang out with people who are educated. And then they, every other word is like, no, Daniel, that wasn't pronounced, no, that wasn't used in the right sentence. Like, oh, well, what were you trying to say in that word? Like, like relative yeah. speaking. <laughs> so we've got time for about one question from each side. Oh, that's terrible. We've been taking up all the time. 
talking about our nonsense think golf. They'd rather hear you guys speak than us or the audience, to be honest. So you, it's okay. Ask the question quickly and maybe we might get through a couple. Over here, Daniel, over here. Here's a question for both of you guys. When you guys watch Star Wars, is it do you guys get the same experience as all those fans get, or do you guys just see yourself like up there and like, oh that's weird? No, I think one is very much involved with fans of the films. I remember seeing uh, Empire Strikes Back the second time round, somewhere in America, I can't remember now, but a group of us went and said, it's on again. And that was, uh, as I was coming in uh, to sit down to watch the film, Empire Strikes Back again, there's someone said, that's Jeremy Bullock. And I came in and sort of just nodded and smiled, and the whole audience started to applaud. And that, I didn't think they wanted that. They wanted to show the film again to see how it was going to go. But they kept sort of laughing and giggling and applauding. That was a lovely moment, though, just hearing people saying, hey, that's Jeremy Bullock. That was years after the first show. Amazing. It's, it's amazing that how George Lucas films these things because he gives us a lot of blue and green screen so you don't know what's there. You know, he's like, what's behind the curtain? Imagine it. You know, so when it comes to actually doing the film, he chops it up so weirdly that it's not like, all right, we're going to start from here, go to here. He goes from the beginning to the end, to the middle, to the end, to the beginning, to the middle, to the be beginning. And he jumps all over the set. So there's so many other things going on that even if you try to put the pieces of the picture of the, of the story together, it's going to take a genius to figure it out unless you had the whole script. And as the actors of whatever scenes and uh, whatever takes you have, they give you sides that are about this thick and that big. So I mean, you don't get the whole script. You don't know what the story is. So when we went to go and watch it the first time, it was like seeing a movie that I'd never, wasn't even really a part of, but then once in a while I was like this big old chubby face comes on like, Dad, Tom Wee's here! You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> oh, you're right, yeah. oh. You know what I mean? It's like... Get him! Oh. <laughs> like, thank you. So it's like, oh, I get embarrassed. I still do, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's go over here. Last question, I'm sorry. This is for Daniel. I uh, understand that now you're living here in Salt Lake, and as a native Salt Laker, we like to welcome you here. Thank you. I was wondering, uh, what brought you to Salt Lake? Why did you move here? Um, well, my uncle was, the, uh, was one of the founders and the creators of a, a very big tech company here called Fusion IO. Um, they're right off the 215, a pretty big building, but um, he built the company, him and his partner David Flynn, and um, they both stepped away because they wanted to pursue uh, another avenue. So they've asked me and my wife to be a part of it, um, but he's not going to launch it next year now, and he was planning on trying to launch it this year. Um, so, um, I figured I might as well do real at the school while I'm here. Um, because I love buying things and trying to make some money back off it, hopefully, you know, my budget will get tighter and tighter. Um, are, are you doing any acting here in Salt Lake? Not yet. I've been doing a lot of acting on ABC4. They've been asking me to do a lot of interviews and I've really loved it, actually, the whole entire crew. Um, but... I'm really just still fresh. I'm the one who's driving the cargo back and forth, you know, more or less from California to here. So I've only really been here solidly about three or four months. Um, Snowbird is a rip-off, guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just being honest. Like, I have to vent to someone because I have no one to vent to. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love snowboarding. And um, I just need to figure out the weather patterns, you know? When it looks a little gray outside, it's probably, you know, a blizzard up on the mountain and I won't be able to see a foot in front of me. And they don't tell you on the bottom, you know, they're not like, hey, uh, by the way, before you buy your pass for today, there's a blizzard up there, you probably won't be able to see anything, you know, it's like, yes, here you go, how much, 500 bucks, thank you, mister, enjoy your not being able to see day snowboarding. <laughs> So I want to thank you guys very much for uh, coming and talking to us. I think. Uh... Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for making us feel so welcome, especially for London. Thank you. Have a wonderful Soul Lake experience, Soul Lake Comic experience, and come see us again next year, because I'll be here as a fan.